Don't think of it as trying to come for you. Think of it as trying to assist you. And just knowing that, as I said, th- this stuff, is, it's already here. And just leveraging it. That's all it is. Don't let it take away what you love to do. Or as I said, you mentioned you love script writing, right? Mm-hmm. Don't let it take away that love. But the things that you want to automate or delegate that you would normally have an assistant would have to hire an assistant for. Yeah. You can just kind of use it to help out with those things. Y'all know from episode 74 that I wasn't using ChatGPT to create content for me. At that point, I wasn't even aware of how to use ChatGPT in any way for my podcast other than script writing. In episode 75, David Foreman enlightened me. And in episode 76, I told you how I've since been using ChatGPT a little bit. I'm excited to have this conversation today with my guest about how y'all can use ChatGPT in your podcast and to see if I'm missing anything else. John Mendez is a serial entrepreneur, realtor, podcast host, and social media expert. He is deeply passionate about helping other like-minded individuals achieve a life of abundance. Through the power of the mind and social media, John is empowering others to obtain financial freedom and build the lives they've always dreamed of living. John's podcast is the Walk to Wealth podcast. Welcome, John. I am so happy you're here today. I'm super excited to be here, Kelly. Ever since we first connected, it's been a little while. So I've been looking forward to this and I'm excited to see where our conversation takes us. Oh, me too. Yes, this is a hot topic out in the world among podcasters. And surprisingly for me now, as (laughs) y'all listeners could tell, which again, surprises me that, you know, I'm talking about it so much. So let's start with some basics of what ChatGPT is and how it works. Yeah, so pretty much ChatGPT, it's an AI chatbot, an artificial intelligence chatbot. It stands for Chat Generative Pre-Transformer, which sounds super big and fancy. Uh, pretty much all you need to know for the most part to understand it is that you put in questions or you put in scripts or prompts and it gives you responses in real time relatively, really quickly. And there's now a paid version. I haven't upgraded just because I haven't really seen the need to at this point in time that we're recording that Mm -hmm. you can get the prompts responded to even faster and you can be up to date with some of the new features. But in its simplest term, it's pretty much it uses the text, the context of the conversation to generate its responses. So as your conversation continues, let's say you wanted to use ChatGPT, we're both podcasters, let's say for podcasts, and you give it more information about the podcast, it will make better responses based off of the amount of context you put into it and the the level of question that you asked it. So if you asked it, hey, create a script for me, it could probably do that. But if you said, hey, create a script about how podcasting is the best vehicle in the world and write it in 16th century English and have an enticing call to action in the end. And like, so the more you put into it, the better you'll get out. Awesome. Yeah, and absolutely. I love what you're saying about the more information you give it, the better the results that you're going to get from it. So when I was playing with it early on, or not early on, but but recently after I started to to use it a little bit more, I I actually asked it if it knew who I was, you know, Angela Kelly Smith. Yeah. And it did not. And it tells you, you know, it it doesn't access data in real time. So I told it who I am, starting with being the host of Podcast Launchpad. Then I added more information that I host the former, I, I just ended it uh, uh, in March, a, a marketing chat podcast and ho- co-host of Geek Girl Soup. And so it would spit, ba- oh, and how I help women entrepreneurs with their podcasts. And then I started giving it more information and it would respond with, I can see how being a filmmaker and artist can help with blah, blah, blah and podcasting and add more information and blah, blah, blah. And so then later I asked it, do you know who Angela Kelly Smith is? And it told me in its own words, it didn't spit out verbatim what I had told it. And that was really cool. And and it made one mistake and I corrected it. So 
I love that, that it is learning. And so then when I asked it a question to like give me some, actually I asked it to give me some questions hmm. for a specific podcast it, uh, episode, it, it helped and it was based on me. I felt like it wasn't totally generic. So that was mm. very, very cool. Yeah, it's one of those things where within that chat, because you always start up a new chat. So if you try to then go to a new chat and say, who's Angela Kelly Smith? Then it would be like, um, I don't have any knowledge on this person or I don't have, I can't access the data in real time. Again, so it's just within that specific chat. So if you ever wanted to start stretch, you could always just add a new chat. Or if you ever wanted to keep on going, you could always go back to that chat that you started and continue with where you left off. Interesting. So if you type in who's Angela Kelly Smith, it won't know. I didn't just feed it to the whole database. So for the time being, no, it wouldn't. <gasps> at the, at the oh, now that point. sucks. But it does, all the data does get stored. And okay. for the most part, it, it always is constantly improving. And as the data set that's fed into it, that's how ChatGPT can run and create responses because okay. it's fed a certain a data set. And cool. as more people use it, more people give it feedback, the data set then continues to grow. And then more information will be put into it so that it can create even more responses, even more creative responses. And you'll realize you use chat GPT and you start asking it, like, let's say you wanted to do, and I, we'll talk about this later on, most likely, yeah. but let's say you wanted to do show notes, right? Mm -hmm. And after a certain point in time, you'll notice that all your show notes even though it's probably for different episodes and you told it to write a show note on this thing and then a new topic and another topic, it'll all kind of start to look the same. There's a little bit of, of lack in creativity there. So mm -hmm. as I said, that's just due to the smaller data set. But as it continues to get more feedback, more people continue to use it, it will get a larger data set so that it can be more creative. It can be more eloquent. It can be more, you know, diverse in, their, it's in terms of like their responses. That makes sense. Now for like, if I used it to write my show notes, I'm cool with it f with each set of show notes, the show notes for each episode being similar. I do that anyway. Yeah. So like I have sort of a you know template where it's like descriptive paragraph with keynote um, keynotes, keywords <laughs> that I tend to use in in a version for SEO and for the episode blog post yeah. description and maybe a, another tiny paragraph, a quote, bullet points. And if it's a guest interview, then a, a tiny bio about the guest. So like that's my format. So if it came up with a format, then I would be cool for it to to be similar. But yeah, I don't want it to be the same words every yeah. time. Yeah, it's like not some, at all. Sometimes I would use like the same adjectives and the same verbs. It's just like, uh, okay, let me just type it in. But there's another tool as well that I use that goes hand in hand with ChatGPT called Quillbot. And mm -hmm. now Quillbot is another AI tool. And what Quillbot essentially does, if you put ChatGPT into a scanner, it will show up and be marked as AI generated. Oh, so wow. when you put the ChatGPT content into Quillbot, Quillbot is a paraphraser. So it rewords things and makes it into other words, pretty much essentially. Whoa. So it takes the chat GPT written content, it paraphrases it and makes it more like a human, more like a person wrote it. And so if you put the quail bot response, which is essentially the chat GPT response paraphrase, you put the quail bot response into one of these scanners, it would only show up as a couple percentage points AI generated versus virtually like 95, 99% chat AI generated. So Quillbot is another tool that I use to kind of go hand in hand so that it doesn't sound super robot, like robot like. Right. Very cool. Okay. How do you spell that? Quill. So Q U I L L bot, okay. B O T. And okay, if great. you just type it into Google, it'll automatically pop up and it's free to use if you have under 125 words. So if you have a big essay, you just probably have to take out 125 word chunks and do it okay. that way unless you want to pay for the actual paid version, which okay. I haven't. I just use the free version and it's for for the time being, it's unlimited. So you can just go in there and just put in keep on putting 125 word chunks and have it wow. keep on paraphrasing. That's awesome. Okay, so that's very cool to use those two together like that. Mm -hmm. Love that. They go hand in hand. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so when I started out being opposed <laughs> to using ChatGPT for myself, 
I was thinking like what I had been hearing other people using it for was to generate like their podcast script. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not going to do that. I love writing. I'm precious about my words. I'm going to do that myself. I don't need that kind of help. And when I was interviewing David Foreman in episode 77, one of the things he suggested is that I could use it to come up with questions. And so I asked ChatGPT, one question I asked was, what are the most common questions people have about using ChatGPT for their podcasts? And it came up with five really interesting questions. So that was cool. And then I've started using it to tell it like, uh, so for this podcast, uh, this episode, I asked it, I'm interviewing someone for my podcast about how to use ChatGPT for their podcast. What questions should I ask him? And it came up with some cool questions. And then like I took the questions apart and, you know, made them my own. So like I haven't needed help coming up with questions for most of my interviews because I know something about the topic. And for this one, I didn't necessarily need that help, but it came up with some questions that I hadn't thought of. So that is saving me time. I don't know why I hadn't thought of that before. I just associated chat GPT with script writing, you know, not, I mean, I know people use it for maybe scripts and for yeah. books and blog posts. So that's all I was associating it with. Yeah, it's one of those things where I see the whole point where it comes from the script. And it's something that like video outlines or like podcast outlines, I think it's perfect for. The actual content itself is something that I would steer, steer away from using it as well. Similar to you, I would steer away from using it to actually generate the content for you because then it's like you'd lose yourself kind of. It's not you. And with podcasting, you know, we're both podcasters. It's a lot of the reason why people tune in is for us, for our voice, for our opinion, our expertise, our knowledge, our personality, our flavor, our swag, or whatever it may be, our charisma it might be. It's like people tune in for us. So if you just lose yourself to the AI because you want to start generating scripts and make it done faster and streamline the process, it's something that you may start losing and disconnecting with a lot of people or be very surface level connected with a lot of people. So what I would use it for is for the outline. It helps with the ideation process. So if you have an idea, ah, oh, man, I want to talk to so-and-so about, let's say you have an entrepreneurship podcast. I really want to talk to, on the topic of, you know, small business marketing. Mm -hmm. And I, I, there's so many things to cover. Uh, I, I don't know where to start. Hey, ChatGPT, can you help me come up with a 30-minute podcast outline for a marketing for small business podcast episode? Mm -hmm. And you go off the outline, and then it, it might pop up. Uh, paid media might pop out uh, going to local businesses and connecting with store owners and may talk about uh, hosting local events, whatever it may be. And it'll give you like a bullet point outline. And then from there, you can just pick and choose. It gives you a start. It gives you something to run off of. It gives you that springboard to get your ideas from stuck in your head and not getting anything done and just being stuck to, his, oh, here's a couple ideas and you may not like everything. You might take some and leave out others. You may use the whole outline, but you have to make sure that the content itself is you. Yeah. The outline that you follow, yeah, generate chat, chat GPT to generate all your outlines. As long as you are actually creating the content, it's you that's speaking out the content. It's your ideas and stuff like that. It may talk, tell you to talk about X, Y, Z, but as long as you're sharing your experiences and your knowledge, you're not having it write out X, having it write out Y, having it write out Z. You just having it write out the ideas and then you'll go into depth from your own personal knowledge, your own experience. The And if you have a guest, the knowledge and experience of the guest to talk about those topics, not have chat GPT generate the content that you're talking about for those uh, topics. Absolutely. Totally agree. Because what you were saying about our voice, our charisma, our flair, our vibe, that is why listeners tune in that the content that we're giving so much of it they can find elsewhere in other podcasts and blogs you know mm -hmm. and so why they listen to us or you know in the case of like a blog read the post is well more so though podcasts it's really hard for personality to come out in writing you know it is really hard but so on podcasts they're hearing us they hear our inflections and our emotion and our energy and if and the way we put words together 
it's not just the words, it's not just the information. And so if we turn all of that over to AI, what's the point in listening? What's the point in even having a show? Hmm. And the, the outline you were just talking about, like those bullet points that ChatGPT could generate, those can even be different episodes. You know, some of them are pretty broad. Yeah. And so you could use those to, or you could ask G chat GPT to generate episode topics and then ask for potential questions within each of those topics. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And another cool thing you could do, let's say you ask chat GPT for an outline on small business marketing. Let's just run with this example. So we're not yeah. coming up with different examples and it gives you, as I said, paid media, connect with local business owners, host local events, do social media marketing, whatever. Now you have like four different things you could talk about. You'd also have chat GPT. Okay. Now create an outline for each individual thing. And then from there, it'll give you an outline on paid media. So it may take Facebook ads, YouTube ads, Google ads, uh, whatever it may be ads. And then you'll go into, and now, as you said, now you make each of those things, instead of having one big episode where you do a big general overview on those topics, now you can just break those up into little smaller episodes and have ChatGPT create the outline. You go out, you do your due diligence, you look it up, you do your research so that when you hop on a podcast, it's still you coming along. And yeah. another thing that you could do to even partner with that and get a little bit of a, a little bit ninja, I like to say, is there's something called answerthepublic.com. Yes. It's a free website to use and you can go on there and you can put in a keyword and it aggregates all the information, and all the questions, the most common questions that people are searching up on Google with those keywords. So let's mm -hmm. say we're talking about paid media again. You go on answer the public and now you have a bunch of questions l generated for you that people are searching for on Google, not just random chat GPT generated questions. Yeah. Answer the public aggregates the information from these search engines and puts that out for you. And you can take those search engine questions that people are asking, put that into chat GPT, say create an outline for this. Mm. And you can go from there. Now you have, you're making content that people actually want to see based off of the topic that you wanted to talk about. Yeah, That's beautiful. And so uh, back up just a sec to what you said about do your research. Absolutely. Because even when you're asking ChatGPT for topics, if you're asking ChatGPT to give you the information on those topics, ChatGPT has been known to give out misinformation or false information. And yeah. it tells you that itself about some of the downsides, uh, downsides or limitations of ChatGPT. Yeah, it's something where you have to take everything with a grain of salt, as they say. Mm -hmm. And ChatGPT is not excluded from that saying. You have to make sure you do your due diligence, especially in some of these industries. As I said, I talked to a lot of real estate professionals. So fair housing is something that is a big thing. So it's like if you gener generate scripts and content and you just start posting what ChatGPT says for you, you could find yourself in a violation with in accordance to whatever laws and regulation that run your industry very quickly. If you don't do your due diligence, if you don't double check, if you don't reread and proofread before you post anything out there. So mm -hmm. definitely don't let it be something that you rely on, right? Let's, mm -hmm. Don't let it be the thing that you're leaning on. Because someone, as soon as someone pulls the wall back a little bit, you're going to fall on your face. Have mm -hmm. it be something that assists you in your process of creating the content and your process of creating whatever it is that you may be creating for us podcast. Mm -hmm. And then from there, that's the best way to go about it. Because if someone were to take it away or if it were to spit off bad information, you weren't relying on it. You were just letting it assist you. There's a difference. That's great. So let it assist you and don't rely on it yeah. or and don't let it control you. Absolutely. So, oh my gosh, I just forgot uh, yeah. what I wanted to go back to there. Shoot. Okay. Um, oh, that's right. Uh, answer the public. So you could also use, I like to use questions for my solo episodes, like as titles Yeah. frequently, because those are 
what people are Googling. And so it makes your episodes more discoverable. And you can get those questions, like you said, from Answer the Public. You can also ask ChatGPT to come up with episode titles. Mm -hmm. And then you could compare those to what's coming up in Answer the Public. Because ChatGPT tends to give you keywords in the titles, but also clever titles, which is great. You know, clever is wonderful, but you definitely need keywords in there. And answer the public, if you use those questions as titles, not clever at all, but totally discoverable, because those are verbatim what people are Googling. Yeah. And it's one of those things where solo episodes, from what I've been told and taught and learned, it's one of those things where that's where you get to really showcase your expertise and stuff like that. So like with the titles, it's just be clear. Like what can people get out of this? It's one thing that no matter what industry you're in, the favorite radio station that everyone loves is W I I F M. What's in it for me. (gasps) And so the clearer you can be when it comes to what's in it for whoever's listening, the easier it is for them to click on it, the easier it is for them to actually stay and listen as long as they know what's in it for me. So the titles, because you, you learn in copywriting that you have to be clever and cu- invoke curiosity and things like that. But sometimes it's like, get to it, right? Just like, how can I build a podcast? What's the first steps to building my podcast? Boom. Not for ninja secrets to podcast hosting that you've never heard of before. Like, right, you don't have to have the super, you know, curiosity invoking headline and use the copywriting tactics. It's like, how can I start my podcast? Question mark. Boom. That's it. Exactly. Yep. And if you want to put in something about uh, my top ninja methods, put that afterwards. So how do I start a podcast? Dash or parentheses, my favorite ninja methods. Yeah. Whatever. And and go from there. And it's more so a lot of that stuff with the headline stuff, that's more for like landing pages, not for like episode titles and things like that. So for landing pages, you definitely want to have that curiosity invoking headline where it's like, oh my goodness, like ninja strategy. Is it this? Is it that? No, I I, I got to sign up because I got to figure it out. For, for like a podcast episode, they already want to hear from you. You don't have to convince them to that. If they're tuning, especially if they already follow you, if they're listening now. It's like, because they seen Kelly, dropped a new episode, I want to listen to Kelly. What am I going to listen to in this episode? Just tell him. Yeah. That is a brilliant differentiation. Podcast episode titles versus sales page title yeah. or some other uh, program name or, you know, e a digital course, something like that. Love that you made that distinction. That is awesome. It's one of those things that I, I'm messing around with a lot of titles myself. I've been messing around because I started dropping more episodes recently and I've been trying to figure out, okay, what's landing, what's not. So I'm trying the different headlines. I'm trying the sales kind of cat, super curiosity working headlines. I'm trying the more straightforward stuff and I'm going to start making a switch to just more straightforward stuff, especially as I, I, I mainly do a lot of interviews, but as I start doing more solo episodes, it's going to be like, three steps to start a business, something like that. Super mm-hmm. straightforward, super simple to the point. And because if people are tuning in, it's because they already want to tune in. You don't have to try to convert them. Or as I said, like you would in the landing page, like you would in some type of sales, so video sales letter or anything like that. It's like, they're already converted. They already like you. They listen to you. They put you in their, you know, their headphones and go work out or run or whatever they may be doing or cook. It's, it's like, just tell them, hey, this episode is on. XYZ. Boom. And that way they know like, all right, I'm going to be learning about XYZ. They don't, you don't need to convince them already. If they're tuning into your podcast, yeah. it's because they already want to hear your podcast. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And if they're not already listening, they can find your po- podcast and episodes on Google. Yeah. They can also find them, of course, in the apps, podcast apps. But when they are finding them on Googling, it's because they are Googling a problem that they have. 
And so they're not Googling ninja strategies to start a podcast. They're Googling, how do I start a podcast? Or how do I start a podcast for free or on a budget? Something like that. And so those are really hard to rank for, by the way. Really hard. But you get the idea. Yeah. So if you have an episode title that is the exact query that someone is Googling, your episode has a better chance of showing up. Yeah, especially once you get into the, the SEO stuff is something that's super complicated and hard to get into. And something that the, the podcast platforms also suck at it. So it doesn't help. Right. So right. We're, we're, we're kind of behind the eight ball when it comes to that stuff and this discoverability. But yeah. supposedly, what they're doing, I went to PodFest Expo in January. And Me too. Oh, you did? Yeah. I'm surprised bad we, we didn't, didn't bump, any, and bump into each other. Yeah. I didn't have my hair out too, so you probably, I was blending in. I had my hair in braids, so I, I, I definitely didn't stick out at all. Um, <laughs> but um, they were talking about PodFest Expo, how they have some stuff that's in the works of how discoverability is going to actually be something that they start making changes for. So hopefully yeah. we get some benefit from that in the near yeah. future because and um, we, we've been kind of slacking in that department for a while now. Yes, for sure. Yeah, I I feel like it's getting better because Google is starting to have a different section for podcasts that shows yeah. up. And of course, if you put if you record video, put that on YouTube. Google owns YouTube, so those show up. Yeah. But yeah. All right. So Chat GPT and other AI. What other ways can podcasters use? chat gpt and other ai to improve their podcasts yeah so one of the best ways to use it we talked about creating outlines we talked about at having it generate questions but another thing too is having it do for like events giveaways things Ooh. like that so like one of the things that i'm doing right now actually in may i'm going to be celebrating my 100th podcast episode <gasps> right congratulations thank you it's been a long journey and for me i wanted to celebrate it because as you know in the podcast game uh, getting triple digits is a mark that not a lot of people get to because I think yeah. what seven episodes is usually pod yes. fade yes. before people start pod fading. So I was like, exactly. I haven't done anything at all for my podcast. I mm -hmm. want to do something and I want to do something local. So I got this idea from the people from Earn Your Leisure, which mm -hmm. are another big time like entrepreneur business, personal finance type podcast. Uh, I think they're like in the top 20 on, on mm -hmm. Apple Podcasts, I think. Wow. And they sold out Madison Square Garden and they pretty much had live in-person interview. And then they had the people in Madison Square Garden, like watching them while they interview whoever they were interviewing. And I was like, oh, okay, I kind of want to do that. So I did it on a way smaller scale. <laughs> I had like 16 people for my first one. And that was back in December. But wow. then, and I was like very last minute within two weeks notice i kind of found a venue found like some sponsors and i never hosted an event before and mm -hmm. so for this time around i was like okay i want to put more thought into this so i had chat gpt help me create like a landing page for people to rsvp i had <gasps> chat gpt help me create like an email copy so <gasps> for like the email campaigns and then as i said i partnered it up with quillbot to make it a little bit more personalized but ChatGPT, for the most part, created the email campaign so that when I start marketing for that event, I can have people sign up to join. And I had ChatGPT create like a video outline idea for that. So if you have doing like little events for your podcast, if you do like local events, or maybe you want to do like a giveaway for your 50th episode or your 25th episode, or because you hit a thousand downloads or whatever mm -hmm. it may be, you can have ChatGPT generate some ideas and mm -hmm. you tell it your niche. So for me, it's personal finance, entrepreneurship, real estate investing, things like that. And I had it create ideas for me. And then it helped me out with that. And then I helped, it helped me also create the like giveaway. So it's like, if you read the, the giveaway, it's like, are you ready for the event of the century? Mm -hmm. It's time to like, come join us locally as we celebrate the 100th podcast episode. And, da -da -da -da, and this is whole like super like nice and like, and one of my favorite things too, I always write write in in blockbuster movie style, so it makes everything sounds like super climactic. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And so, but like if you're doing stuff like that, like giveaways, you want to do things for your listeners, things like that. That's another way you could use ChatGPT to 
build more of that community, build more of that loyal fan base and loyal listenership is mm-hmm. use it to create events or use it to create ideas for giveaways so that you can have your actual listeners a lot more involved with what you got going on. It's not just a weekly episode. It's like, oh, John is giving away. A, like for me, I'm giving away a ticket to FinCon. So it's like, <sighs> that's something that I was like, I want to go to that event. Now I'm going to do this. But it's like, how do I get that from in my brain to articulate it in a way that makes people want to come to the event? Because it's going to be local in person. It's not like people can tune into the Zoom webinar. So it's like getting people to gather together in person is a lot harder than having people register for like a a Zoom call or whatever. Yes. So it it helped me out with that. So even if it's not for your actual podcast episode per se, you could have it for your podcast giveaways and your podcast um, email copy, right? And things like that for your, your newsletter. Uh, if you have one of those as well. So that's another great way that you could leverage ChatGPT. Love that. Oh my gosh. So I had an episode planned for it where I was going to mention it's episode 100. Yeah. You just gave me other ideas. Thank (laughs) you. And how to use ChatGPT and Quillbot to help me. Yeah. It's something that once I, I was like, okay, the idea came from somewhere else, but it's like, Okay, now how do I get that into something that I can actually use for myself? Yeah. And then I was on ChatGPT. I was like, okay, I want to do this. I want to create this event in person. And here's kind of the ideas I have so far. Like, can you help me kind of piece it together and put it together? And this and this just started generating the responses to everything. I gave it the context, as we mentioned earlier. And then from there, it just ran off of the context. And another thing to use that is also another little ninja trick is... Tell GPT, chat GPT to act as fill in the blank. So for that Ooh. thing, I told it to act as an event coordinator. Okay. And then from there, it, as I said, you have to give it the context. The better the questions you ask, the better responses you will get. So I told it to act as an event coordinator. But if I wanted to do a drip campaign for my newsletter or something like that, it would be like act as a copywriter. Wow. And so it, from there, it gives it the context and it puts it in that frame to give you even better, more tailored responses. Wow. Okay. So I, I don't think I'm very good at writing sales copy. Yeah. So then yes, if I wanted it to help me with sales copy, I would tell it to write as a copywriter, professional copywriter, professional copywriter. Okay. True. Yeah. That's key. And I would definitely tell it who my audience is, mm-hmm. you know, the ideal client. I'm just wondering, okay, yeah, I guess that that would be, an, or at least to start with, that would be enough. Yeah. Be very clear about who the ideal client is. Yeah. And then if you want another tool, is there something called copy AI? So mm-hmm. <laughs> you get, get the chat GPT stuff and put it into copy AI and it'll pretty much kind of like Quillbot, it'll rewrite the stuff in a way that a copywriter would write it. And that one's trained specifically for copywriting. Wow. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So many tools out there. That's just wild. And And then of course, yeah, yeah. And then of course there's CapShow Mm -hmm. that takes your episodes, gives you a transcript, gives you show notes, blog post, YouTube description, so much more. Yeah. And they're coming out with Capture 2.0 soon. <laughs> I keep getting emails about it. <laughs> so many others. And Jasper? Is yeah. that one? Jasper yeah. is for like blog writing for YouTube okay. descriptions. It's really good for writing blogs. So that's what Jasper is known for. And it is a, quite a bit of a fee for it, but uh, mm. it definitely is something that is, as I said, if you want to get into that, that'll help streamline the process for blog writing and SEO because blogs are one of the best ways to get SEO onto your websites and stuff like yeah. that. So uh, yeah. it's something that as I expand and I have some <laughs> the bandwidth to manage that, I'm definitely planning on, incorporating that into my my repertoire i guess you could say so that i can have another medium that's out there that people want to read because people want to read text as well people like reading so it's Mm -hmm. like we have the audio and the video already from this people don't want to read a transcript they want to read an actual blog and so that Mm -hmm. is just another you know piece of the pie that you can add into your marketing strategy to help out right but 
And to make it easier, just turn the episodes into a blog post instead of coming up necessarily with whole new content. Exactly. Yeah. It's the long form content that is king. And so yes. you have to learn how to repurpose. Like all these big people that are pushing like, hey, you got to post 10 videos a day. You got to post five videos a day. They're not creating none of these videos. They do right. one long podcast and then they literally repurpose everything from that. And yep. that's how they are, they're able to do so much. Of course, yes, they have a team, right? right. We can't leave out that part. But right. team or not, you can still create all the content on your own and then yeah. hire somebody. And all you have to do is show up a couple times a month on a podcast and then have hire people to do it or do it yourself, depending on where your budget is. Right. And then from there, you have all the content you need. Like one 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 hour podcast or so can easily get you close to 40 to 50 digital assets mm -hmm. that you can use to repurpose across all the platforms and channels. So it's yeah. like, how do you get more outputs for your inputs and more leverage on your time? Yeah. And at worst, doing it yourself, a one hour podcast can, again, doing it yourself minimum, you can get five, let's say, audiograms or videograms, highly recommend video. So that would be putting out one a day, you know, for a work week or spread them out. So, you know, don't forget the weekends that you create yourself. If you use Descript, you can create the videos right in Descript. You could use Headliner. You can use Canva. All very easy to do. Not Canva does not create the transcript. At least yeah. I haven't figured out how. But if you, when you upload the reel in Instagram, it can create the transcript for you. Yeah, and so I actually use Riverside FM so to record okay. my podcast. Mm -hmm. So the beauty of Riverside is that while you're interviewing someone live, you can be creating clips in real time. So let, let's say you just dropped a nugget. I'm like, oh my goodness, Kelly just dropped some fire clip. I just press a button. <gasps> and it, it automatically wow. clips it in 30 seconds. So now we're talking, we're having this conversation. You can't tell what I'm doing on my end because you can't see my hands, right? right? So I'm here clipping every piece of golden wisdom that you dropped throughout the conversation. And some people talk in bullet points. Some people are a little more long-winded and talking stories. It makes it a little harder. But some yeah. people talk in like punchlines. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, good punchline, boop, clip, clip. Now you go back at post-recording, you go into your, the the recording and then from there all the videos are already clipped in 30 mm. second segments wow. and now you literally you go into that video you can download it like that but if you literally click one button i kid you not you do not have to have any this sounds super techy i promise you you can be literally the biggest dinosaur when it comes to technology and i kid you not this makes it so simple and you literally just click a button and then it goes from horizontal to vertical and now your content is ready to be posted and uploaded as re reels tiktoks youtube shorts etc cetera, etc cetera. Wow. it's just like that's why i'd say you can easily get 40 to 50 digital yeah. assets it's you're literally just if you record on riverside mm -hmm. you don't even have to go and try to create the content you just wow. clip while you're interviewing and then you press one button and you're gonna have to press that one button for every clip which is a little annoying but yeah. it's you just press one button each time and it goes from horizontal to vertical that's amazing. That is very cool. Yeah. Wow. All right. Yeah. So, not, you know, people listening already have a podcast for the most part. But if you don't, these are all excellent reasons to start a podcast. So, you know, it creates your social media for you. It creates blog posts for you, creates emails for you. So do it. <laughs> yeah. And worst case scenario, even if you don't want to do a podcast, do something long form. Yeah. Only do long form content because the long yeah. form you can repurpose. You can't repurpose a reel more than posting it across different platforms, right? right? It's 30 seconds long. You're going to get clips from a 30 second video. You can have right. two second clips that you're posting on everything. So it's right. like, whether it's long form, you have, either has to be long form audio, long form video, or long form um, text. Yeah. But one of the three. And go use that to then repurpose everything. Absolutely. Totally agree. So we talked a little bit about a few limitations of ChatGPT and other AI. Anything else you want to add to that? We had making sure it's in your own voice, 
uh, potential misinformation or wrong information. So researching everything before you use it, you know, and, and, and don't just copy and paste. Anything else? Um, I think another good one in terms of limitation that AI has, know that it is not going to be the thing that takes away what we have going on. It a lot of people are think that it, it'll be like oh it's gonna take over the world and everything and honestly I'm terrified of that scenario and possibility but for the most part it's something that's meant to be a tool to assist us so mm-hmm. if we can adapt it'll help increase our output and productivity so learning how to roll with it mm-hmm. is going to be something that is very crucial and something that makes your life a lot easier so don't think of it as trying to come for you think of it as trying to assist you. And just knowing that, as I said, th- this stuff, is, it's already here and yeah. just leveraging it. And that's all it is. Don't let it take away what you love to do. Or th- as I said, you mentioned you love script writing, right? Mm-hmm. Don't let it take away that love. But the things that you want to automate or delegate that you would normally have an assistant would have to hire an assistant for. Yeah. You can just kind of use it to help out with those things. Yeah, that makes sense. Because, yeah, something that... I am concerned about is in the future, if kids are using AI to generate writing from scratch yeah. and then making it their own, hopefully, or using Mid Journey and other art based AI to yeah. generate art from scratch, I'm concerned that they won't learn writing and art skills. Yeah. And if they don't learn those from an early age or be introduced to them from an early age, fewer people will learn or will discover if they love writing and art, if they're, those are something that they want to pursue later. Yeah, the easy solution to that, the easy fix is one of the best teachers in life is embarrassment. <laughs> tell them to go to the front of the class. Hey, hey, Johnny, uh, tell us what you, you wrote today. You have a, an amazing, you have the best article in the class. I want you to go share. See how nervous they get. See, see how terrified they get. Yeah. Oh, Johnny, how do you learn how to write like that? Uh, Just ask some questions. People, true. you you can pierce the, the veil very easily. Or, or a lot of people when it comes to this stuff. And it's like, all right, show us what you got. Let's see you off the cuff. And That's go. Out and people are already afraid of public speaking. Now yeah. imagine they have this big insecurity because in the back of their head, they're always going to know that, hey, I didn't create any of this stuff. Yeah. And as soon as it's time, the, the spotlight gets on them and it's time for them to explain that and, you know, explain why they did what they did or what they wrote or whatever it may be. Yeah, they'll learn very quickly like, hey, yeah, this is a good tool to turn in my homework and my assignments. But if you don't know anything, you still don't know anything. So it's Great not, point. It's not uh, you know, going to cover that up. Yeah, that's great. So teachers will have to be sure to do that in the future. Yeah, put kids on the spot about it and really question them, and not just accept. Okay, I I asked for this essay. I'm just going to grade it. Not going to go deeper. Yeah, wonderful. It, a lot of kids too. They'll they'll mess themselves up. It's like you're in third grade and writing, <laughs> talking about Socrates. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, jo- yeah, Johnny, great essay. <laughs> Right. You, you failed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's so true. If it spits out something that's like high school level or gives citations that only um, a PhD would know, then yeah, caught exactly. you. <laughs> that's great. Any ways that you see chat GPT and other AI evolving in the future? So yeah. many ways, but you know, <laughs> you want to point out one or two? Yeah, I think one of the biggest ways with chat GPT evolved it's just going to become a lot more a lot easier and smarter to use and once you get access to i know google and bing are coming out with their own ai tools and stuff like that yeah. and which are going to be directly connected to the internet so it you'll be able to hey summarize this book for me or hey summarize these things for me or hey summarize these emails for me or hey summarize whatever mm-hmm. and that way you're spending more time in quality assurance Mm. And not all the time trying to do everything yourself. You just be kind of proofreading. And that way you'll be able to get so much more done instead mm. of having to do everything yourself. That's great. I love that. So I really love the focus in our conversation here about using this AI as an assistant. Yeah. I love that instead of controlling us. Yeah, exactly. Awesome.
All right. So tell us a little about your podcast, Walk to Wealth. Yeah. So the podcast, the whole story behind it is for the 99% of us that aren't overnight sensations, it's a long walk to wealth. And some may walk faster than others, but what good is sprinting to the finish line if you pass out when you cross it? And the story of how it all came together really is I grew up in a project. It was nine of us in a two bedroom. My mom, she suffered from mental health issues. So as a kid, those things are like super hard to grasp. I just knew that she was the mom that I wanted her to be. And I didn't understand until later on in life. So that led to a lot of arguments growing up. Uh, my dad was never around. We grew up Section 8. We had government assistance, food stamps, you, you, you name it, the whole nine yards. And so money was never something. Abundance was never something I really got to see much of, experience much of growing up. And as I got older, I ended up not having a role model allowed me to get a really open mind. Mm -hmm. And so I was around middle school. I became aware of what money can actually do for people because I had in public schools, you, you get access to see a bunch of people from all walks of life. So I yeah. started to realize the spectrum of what having scarcity is and what having abundance is and seeing that spectrum is not just black and white. There's a, this is a diff, a big spectrum that it's on and just being able to see that and realize that it made me something, it made me realize that there's, there's more out there. And so once I got to college, I was during the pandemic with the whole world being uncertain. The only thing I was certain of was myself. Mm -hmm. And so after reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I had this epiphany and I was like, there's another world out there. Kind of like I said earlier, that wasn't being taught in school, that yeah. wasn't being taught at home, that wasn't being taught in my environment. And I was like, okay, let me look more into this stuff. And so from there, I started looking into personal finance, entrepreneurship. I got into my real estate class, signed up for a real estate class. And I was just kind of on this rabbit hole. And one of my friends was like, hey, John, we should start a podcast. I was like, that would be a great idea. So next thing you know, he ended up going back to college. I was working 70 hours at that time and studying for my real estate license because I needed to pass the test. I failed the first two times. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. And then one week turned to two weeks and then two weeks turned to four and four turned to several months. And eventually I was procrastinating because I couldn't think of a name. So once the name came together, I was like, all right, this is it. Let's run with it. And it's really something that I wanted to do because I just said, just from my upbringing, I knew that it's something that money wasn't something that most people talked about in the inner city or in households where money was tight. So it's like, if I could just document my journey in real time, Mm -hmm. and not wait until I'm quote unquote successful, mm -hmm. right? If I could just document my journey in real time and document the lessons that I'm learning from all these super cool people that were much more successful than me. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that inspires other young people my age that kind of had that seed in them that, hey, I don't want to do this traditional path, yeah. but didn't really know where to go to help cultivate that. That was really what the the origins of the podcast and why I continue to do it despite podcasting being definitely it's a labor of love when you're starting off and something that is it's hard to continue with. That's why so many people pod fade. But it's like yeah. my I remember it was like episode around six or seven around that time. I went like three or four weeks without dropping an episode mm -hmm. and I was about I was on the verge of letting it all go. And then my cousin texted me like, John, like, what are you doing? That's awesome. And then from there, I was like someone actually cares that yeah. I'm of what I'm putting out there. Yeah. And so that's my message to anyone that is here listening, a podcaster. It's like, your message matters. And even if you're not a podcaster, your message matters. Yeah. And then from there, I was like, all right, let me get back into it. Let me get serious. And I just started ramping up from there. And we're now a year and two months strong. Oh, beautiful. You are so right. We don't often hear, you know, unless our podcast is huge, we may not hear from listeners for a while, you know, mm -hmm. six, seven episodes in, especially no, you know, unless, unless you're massive, you have a massive following yeah. before you start your podcast as indie podcasters, we're probably not going to hear from listeners six, seven episodes in. So the fact that your cousin messaged you, it said, what are you doing? That is beautiful. I am so glad that happened so that you continued. Wonderful. I'm so glad it happened too. Cause then I look back at it, it was like a four week gap. And I was like, yeah, I was, I was about to be the, the 90% that didn't, that didn't continue. That didn't stick it out. That yeah. didn't see it through to the end. And I was like really getting in tune with the reason why I started that. That's what her messaging me. 
the message of course impacted me but it, it's it sparked the thought the reflection of like why did i even get into this to begin with mm. it was never to become a joe rogan or a millionaire or make money off it was to spread the message document the journey and i was like okay i gotta keep on doing this and yeah. so i did yep to help your listeners and help them walk that path to wealth mm -hmm. as well exactly that's awesome Love it. All right. Y'all be sure to check out that podcast, Walk to Wealth. I'll put the link in the show notes. So that is wonderful. All right. And what kind of clients do you work with? What do you do with them? And how can listeners find you? Yeah. So if you, first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity, Kelly. I had an amazing time here and I always love talking to other podcasters. It makes everything uh, so much fun, especially podcasters that like talking about podcasts. It makes everything fun because I love this topic and I'm so glad I got into space and seen it through. So I, from one podcaster to another, <laughs> I appreciate the work that you do. Oh, thank you so much. My and pleasure. yes, I this has been an awesome conversation. <laughs> so for anyone that wants to get connected to me and get started with me, so I actually have a replay for a chat GPT class that I taught a while ago where I Ooh. go into a little bit more depth of the chat GPT stuff and I show what it can do. I really mainly work with real estate professionals and entrepreneurs and help them build their online presence without having to create videos, without having to pay, do paid ads, without having to do all these traditional, you know, strategies of posting 100 videos a day and everything. And so if you go to stopandstare.media forward slash chat GPT replay, there you can see the class that I taught and watch the things I talked about mid journey in there. I talked about Tome, that AI, which is a presentation mm -hmm. tool as well. And I go into depth on a little bit more of these other tools that we didn't get to cover today in our conversation. So Again, that's stop and stare dot media forward slash chat GPT replay. And it's free. Or you can connect with me on all the social medias and stuff like that as well. Um, and or the listen to the podcast and join me on as we walk to wealth. Awesome. Well, I will put that link in the show notes too. So y'all can just click on it and magically be there. Thank you so much, John. This has been awesome. I've loved chatting with you, getting more information about ways that my listeners and I can use ChatGPT and Quillbot. And I'm going to have to go back and listen because you mentioned another. Oh, um, copy.ai. AI. Yeah, okay. copy.ai. Awesome. Yes. Fabulous. My, I, I have had an open mind since the beginning when I said I'm not using ChatGPT. My mind has opened even more. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. My pleasure. And thank y'all for being here today. Be sure to follow so you don't miss a single episode. And I will see you next time on Podcast Launchpad. Mm -hmm.